So on this problem, we're going to use the rules for sums of powers of integers to compute the sum. This problem right here, there's not really that many. Let's get my regular colored pen here. There's only a uh, three through ten, so there's only going to be seven terms or eight terms. Um, we could write out every single one here and then add them together. So I'll start out by just writing out the first few. So we're starting at three, not at one. So we have three squared plus four squared. We're just increasing k by one each time. Plus five squared plus, and we're gonna end with 10 squared. So you can definitely add these numbers up. There's only a few going between there. That's one option. Uh, but if this problem said go up to 100, uh, you would spend a whole lot of time doing this. And if it went to 1,000 or 10,000, you would spend forever doing this. Uh, so you can only write out all the numbers and add them together because there's not that many. So what we're going to do is follow the directions and we're going to use the sums of powers, which I have written down here. And where does this come from? If you go over into chapter one, uh, I got these right out of the book. Uh, the reason I hand wrote them here is so that I remember them. And actually, one we're going to use to scroll down is uh, I squared. So it's this third to last one. All right, so let's go back here. <clears throat> First thing to notice, uh, we are starting at three, not at one. So let's address that problem first. So how do we fix this? There's a few ways to do it. This is called re-indexing. And let's see, what's a good way? Let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna write down the summation from k equals one to 10. It is not equal to the original here. So this is not the same thing. So I'm just gonna write down the first few terms. One squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared plus etc. Uh, to 10 squared. And these three dots in math mean etc. or follow the pattern. Uh, what's the difference? There's this one squared plus two squared. That's the difference. Uh, so what I can do is subtract these terms to the other side. So I have uh, one, one squared is one. Uh, so we'll subtract the one, two squared is four. So we'll subtract that four plus that summation that was already on the left side. And we have left is three squared. I subtracted the first two terms. So we got three squared plus four squared plus dot, 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 plus 10 squared. And look at that. What I just wrote down, the reason I did this, what I just wrote down is this summation that's uh, right here that I just circled. So I'm gonna write down that summation. K equals three to 10 K squared. So this is called re-indexing. What I did is I pulled out the first couple terms. Let's get this problem out of here. And what's left, negative one minus four is negative five plus Summation k equals one to 10 of k squared. Okay, we do have a formula for this right here, and it's right here at the top of the page. So let's go ahead, I'll switch colors here. Uh, so let's go over to here, I'll switch colors to blue. Uh, so we have summation, we're going to uh, 10 k equals one to 10 k squared. And now here you got the letter I everywhere. Uh, that doesn't matter uh, what letter you use here. Obviously N is already taken, so don't use N, but you're typically gonna see I's or K's, occasionally maybe some J's, but it's usually gonna be I's and K's. Uh, this example just happened to use K's. All right, now on the right side, what do I write? Well, what is this n value? Well, if you look, it's what's at the top here. For us, n equals 10. So I'm gonna write that down before I forget it. n is 10, and then it's gonna replace the three times that n occurs with a 10. So 
So I just replaced all the ends with 10, and now we can just simplify this down. 10 plus one is 11. 20 plus one is 21 over six. Uh, let's see, we should be able to factor, uh, six of course is two times three. So let's go ahead and write that down. All right, so let's factor out a two and a three. So 10 is two times five. Uh, 11's prime, 21 is three times seven. So I just factored the 21 and the 10 to get a two and a three out. And now I can cancel the threes, I can cancel the twos, and our denominator is now one. That's the best denominator to have, because you don't have a fraction. Nobody likes fractions. Uh, I'll just leave this product here. I don't need to embarrass myself by multiplying it correctly, but uh, we're not quite done yet. What I'm gonna do now is bring this number back over. We have negative five plus what's in the yellow box is this value right here, and we're gonna bring that over. Five times 11 times seven equals this thing we were originally looking for. So this is our final answer here that we can type in. Uh, you can definitely multiply these numbers out. I do know five times 11 is 55, but I don't know what 55 times seven is, so you can do that, or just enter it like this.